Good morning, everyone. My name is Ann Williams Isom, and I'm the Deputy Mayor for Health and Human Services. And I'll turn the mic over to the mayor in just a minute, but I'd like to acknowledge some folks that are here with us in the room today. We have Carla Smith, Deputy CEO of Urban Resource Institute, Wilfredo Lopez, Director of Government Affairs at URI, Lauren Schuster, Vice President of Government Affairs at URI, Mitchell Netburn, President and CEO of Samaritan Daytop Village, Jerry Henney, Vice President for Transitional Housing at Samaritan Village, Scott O'Water, Assistant Executive Director of Bronx Works, Orlando Ivy, President and CEO of Children's Rescue Fund, and Janine Costley, Senior Vice President for Transitional Services Institute for Community Living. We also have my brother Shams DeBaron, an advocate and voice for those with lived experience. And I also know Sarah Wilson was supposed to be here today. I wanted to give her a shout out. She could not be here today. Thank you all for being here today for this very important announcement. We are here to talk about an action that the administration is taking to help New Yorkers on their journey to stable housing and how we're making the, that process easier, particularly for those living in shelter. We all know how important having a stable home is in our lives and appreciate how tough that can be in New York City in particular, whether you are a native New Yorker or someone who has adopted the Big Apple as your beloved home. With that said, I'll turn it over to Mayor Adams to discuss the details of today's action. Thanks so much, and, and uh, thank all of you, you, all those who have advocated uh, for uh, this uh, important emergency order that we're going to do, uh, but if I can, I want to first um, just give an update on the weather. Uh, New York has realized that we went through a horrific experience uh, two weeks ago. Uh, the fire in Canada is still places that's out of control. The uh, FDNY commissioner has been communicating uh, with uh, on the ground officials there to see how much of an assistance we can be. They ask for some personnel and we're going to continue to help them. Uh, due to these fires, we can see smoke across the city today uh, and potentially tomorrow. Uh, last night, we sent out a notified NYC alert to New Yorkers about the potential smoke today. While smoke may be visible, it is expected to remain moderate and below the threshold for issuing an air quality advisory. Uh, we know New Yorkers will be gathering this long weekend I'm um, participating in some events with marches for Father's Day and also Juneteenth. So we're asking people to know their bodies and take the necessary precaution. And while air quality is only forecast 24 hours in advance, we will provide updates as needed throughout the weekend. Uh, the FDNY and NYPD will be providing free N95 masks at locations across the city this weekend. In the meantime, we re recommend all New Yorkers to take the precaution. Uh, New Yorkers stepped up uh, a, week in, a little over a week ago uh, when we experienced this uh, previously. We need to remain vigilant, particularly as these fires continue. And so we're not stating at this time for everyone to stay inside. We're telling those at risk to pay attention <clears throat> and exercise caution if things get a little worse. This, the most important thing is to listen to your body uh, air quality conditions in New York City this weekend may be unhealthy for some people, particularly those with pre-existing conditions. People with heart or breathing problems <clears throat> and older adults may be more sensitive to air quality conditions and should consider limited, prolonged, or intense outdoor activities. At any time, if you're having trouble breathing, call 911. Uh, check the air quality. New Yorkers can stay up to date by signing up for Notify NYC at nyc.gov notify, calling 311 or downloading the mobile app. And you can check the air quality index for your neighborhood at the Environmental Protection Agency's airnow.gov site. And as I said last week, climate change is here. This is a reminder, this is a real issue of how we must uh, combat it. And we continue to lead on climate change issues. Uh, this is something that this administration and previous administrations have been focusing on. Uh, that is the, the, the goal. Uh, uh, today, <clears throat> coming to our announcement, 
uh, we are signing in an emergency rule uh, that is clearly important to put in place. Uh, this will end the longstanding 90 day length of stay requirement for our city FEPS rental assistance program effective immediately. The city FEPS programs allowed individuals and families <clears throat> uh, to rent apartments at competitive market rate rents based on the annual NYCHA Section 8 payment standards. Removing this rule will help even more people into permanent housing as quickly as possible and will do something without overburdening taxpayers. Today's announcement has been months in the making. It built on last year's city FEPS reform, something that uh, uh, Chief Housing Officer Jessica Katz uh, really spent a lot of time uh, putting into place. And I want to thank you, Jessica, Jessica, for your service and for just your vision on these issues. As well as other programs like the Street to Home Pilot, the, uh, that place homeless in New York is directly into supportive housing, an initiative that we started. Since taking office, we have been focused on housing more people, reducing bureaucracy, and streamlining, streamlining our processes, and increasing funding for affordable housing <clears throat> to a record level of $24 billion. And so today's announcement will help continue this record of achievement and highlights the good work our city government delivers every day. And I want to thank everyone at DSS and other agencies for their outgoing efforts to help New Yorkers get the housing they need and the housing they deserve. I'm proud of the work our city does every day to help those in care and find safety and stability. We continue to do everything in our power to address this housing crisis. But as we've been saying, <clears throat> we need you, Albany. Uh, clearly, we're looking at a series of bills that was placed on the sideline last legislative session that must be looked at. So that we want people to have vouchers that can help them find permanent homes. We need to really build the housing New Yorkers need. The state lawmakers must pass a 421A replacement, allow more office conversion, and lift the cap on housing in Midtown Manhattan. We continue to advocate for these changes even as we ramp up our own efforts. Today's annou announcement is an important step forward. Rule change will help get both families and single adults, families and single adults, in shelter the help they need when they need it, with more precision and less red tape and bureaucracy. As we have, we have said so often, the solution to homelessness is permanent housing. And with this change, we will move more New Yorkers into homes that can call, they can call their home faster and even more reliable than before. Well, thank you. Thank you for all involved. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Now we'd like to hear from Molly Park, the commissioner from the Department of Social Services. Okay. All right. Sorry about All right. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, good morning. I'm Molly Wasso Park. I'm the Commissioner for the Department of Social Services. As some of you might know, I've spent most of, before joining DSS, I used to work at the HPD, the city's housing agency. And strengthening access to affordable housing for low income New Yorkers has been the foundation of my career. Today's announcement is especially close to my heart as we further expedite connections to housing opportunities for New Yorkers in shelter. The wide range of city FEPS reforms that we announced late last year are already in effect, helping even more New Yorkers get stably housed. And the system changes we've made, process and staffing improvements, and tech innovations to expedite placements are play paying off. As a result of these efforts, we've been able to increase our total subsidized housing placements by 20% year over year. This year, we're on track to, place, or to connect a record number of households to city FEPS vouchers. Bottom line, DSS is the city's social service agency, but we're also a housing agency. DSS administers rental subsidies for 56,000 households. That makes us effectively the fourth largest housing authority in the country. We also continue to work on creative solutions with our agency partners to facilitate the creation of affordable housing for our clients. While we know there is always more work to be done, 
our efforts are headed in the right direction. And with today's important step, we look forward to continuing to build on the important progress that we've made. With the elimination of the length of stay requirement, we will be able to move more New Yorkers from shelter to permanent housing more quickly while freeing up much needed capacity in the DHS shelter system. I wanna thank our incredible not-for-profit partners, some of whom are here today. We can't do this work without you. And I'm especially grateful to Mayor Adams and Deputy Mayor Williams Isom for leading the way and truly leading no stone unturned in the city's efforts to ensure that despite unprecedented challenges, we remain equipped to provide care for every vulnerable family and individual who comes to us in need of shelter. Thank you. Commissioners, thank you so much for all the work that you've done and thank you so much for saying yes to us when we asked you to take this position. Um, now I'd like to bring up Carla Smith, Deputy CEO from the Urban Resource Institute. Good morning. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Commissioner, for the opportunity to speak today. Um, as mentioned, uh, my name is Dr. Carla Smith. I'm the Deputy CEO for Urban Resource Institute. We are the largest provider of domestic violence shelter services in New York City and around the country. For those who don't know, URI provides shelter and trauma-informed care to families experiencing homelessness and survivors of domestic violence, including those who have pets. On an average evening, we serve more than 2,200 people in, our, in one of our 22 shelters across the city. At URI, we know far too well how real the struggle is for our clients to find safe, stable, and affordable housing. URI's dedicated staff begins providing comprehensive services as soon as our clients walk through the door. We help them to stabilize and obtain the skills required to achieve and maintain housing. However, that process has often taken way too long prior to today. I'm so proud to be here today uh, as Mayor Adams takes this important action to further expand access to City FEPS housing vouchers for New Yorkers in shelter. With this rule change, our staff can immediately begin working to help clients find safe and secure their next home. This administration is working to strengthen access to rental assistance, cut the red tape, as the mayor already indicated, and eliminate barriers to permanent housing for vulnerable New Yorkers. Against the backdrop of an ongoing humanitarian crisis, it's critical that we continue to work together to provide resources to every single person experiencing homelessness. This step that the mayor is taking today will help free up much needed shelter space, enabling us as providers to move more quickly to place clients into permanent housing. And it will make a significant difference to the lives of the people that we serve. Mayor Adams, thank you for, to you and to your leadership team for all this work and for actually taking this important step today. At URI, we look forward to continuing our work to partner with the city uh, to provide safe and stable temporary and permanent housing to those in need. Now, our CEO, Nathaniel Fields, who was supposed to be here today, could not be here, um, but he wanted me to just share a few words and, and reiterate his excitement and appreciation, applauding the city's efforts to do this today. He did want me to mention that there is more work to be done, right? And we all know this as providers in the community, that we must meet the challenges of this moment with a call to action. That call to action for everyone in this room and beyond involves needing a more comprehensive and coherent national immigration policy. We know we must take action. And what we need now is a political will to do that. We must create real solutions to address our shared humanitarian crisis. And we are part of that solution, along with the other providers in this room and in the city. Well, Thank you, Mayor. Well said. Appreciate yeah. it. Some rocky shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even tell you what he said. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sister. And I left off your doctor, so Dr. Smith, thank you so much. Now we'd like to hear a few words from um, Shams DeBaron from his personal experiences. Let's sit right here. I hope I can read this. <laughs> well, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Good morning, everybody. Uh, today I'm proud to stand by the mayor, the deputy mayor, the commissioners, 
Chief Housing Officer, and all of you who are here because we're celebrating an important occasion. As someone who has lived in the shelter, slept on our streets, raised my son in the family shelter system, slept in the subways, and struggled for such a long time in search of affordable housing in New York City, I know very well how that could negatively impact a person's mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. When you hit rock bottom and find yourself navigating a system full of red tape and filled with tremendous barriers to housing, oh, I'm telling you, it takes a toll on your life. While my search for housing is finally over today, I continue to fight to make things better for my brothers and sisters in need. And I'm grateful for being able to help so many people with the support of our mayor, who opened up the doors of City Hall and welcomed not just me, but other impacted advocates like Sarah Wilson. And as we took our seats at the table and began helping to bring change to the broken systems that have been a staple of city government, everyone has been supportive in this administration. The city FEPS reforms that were implemented last year were the direct result of real and focused interactions with homeless New Yorkers. When impacted advocates gave voice to what we felt was the most important needs, our most important needs, without an intermediary. The result was a clearer understanding of the issues and what needed to be done to properly address our issues. So we're celebrating at City Hall because the city is removing yet another barrier to permanent housing for homeless New Yorkers. With this action, the administration is doubling down on the commitment to reducing administrative burdens for our vulnerable communities. Last night, there were 80,613 people in our city shelters. 26,970 of them were children. It is clear from these numbers that we are in a homelessness and lack of affordable housing crisis. We're facing challenges that we're not even on our radar a year ago this time. So I believe it's important to work toward a sensible solution that will not ignore the plight of those who are already stuck in shelters. We can't talk about racial equity if we allow 90% of the black and brown people to remain stuck in shelters without a quick pathway to housing. And I'm saying this, a city divided against itself will not stand during this time of crisis. I humbly encourage all of us to come together, roll up our sleeves, put our differences aside, center people over politics, listen and engage with those closest in proximity to the issues and work collectively to solve homelessness in our city. Thank you, Mayor Adams, you. for continuing to cut the red tape and expanding access to housing for New Yorkers in need. Thank you. Shams, thank you so much for that powerful testimony. And now I think we are moving to the table, Mayor. Yep, yep, yep. Sounds like a plan. Thank <laughs> you. 